This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The Chicago newspaper man Sidney Harris once wrote in his column, I was walking along with my friend to the newsstand the other night, and he bought a paper, thanking the newsboy politely, but the newsboy didn't even acknowledge it. He's a sullen fellow, isn't he? I commented. Oh, he's that way every night, my friend shrugged and said, and then why do you continue to be so polite to him? I asked, and my friend replied, why not? Why should I let him decide how I am going to act? The psychologist Viktor Frankl has written, ultimate freedom is the freedom to choose your attitude. In 1934, two men turned the tragedy of their alcoholism into the beginnings of Alcoholics Anonymous, an organization which today does more than any other to help cure people of this devastating affliction. Helen Keller turned her triple tragedy of blindness, muteness, and deafness into amazing opportunities for millions of children having similar birth defects. George Washington Carver turned the misfortune of being a nameless black slave orphan into becoming the hope of the economic life of his people in the South. And people all over the world have benefited from the results of his consecrated research. Franklin D. Roosevelt turned the tragedy of his crippling polio into the March of Dimes movement. And polio has been conquered. Whatever your problems may be, turn trouble into triumph by living faith. In the life of Jesus, you read, then some people came to him bringing little children for him to touch. The disciples tried to discourage them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and told them, you must let little children come to me. Never stop them, for the kingdom of God is made of little ones like these. Indeed, said Jesus, I assure you that the man who does not accept the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And then he took the children in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Here again, Jesus emphasizes childlike faith of a son or daughter of God. Personal spiritual faith in the individual's sonship or daughterhood with God is the powerful stimulus which is destined to transform this planet from its present condition of relative chaos to the glory of unrevealed destiny. The current age of social, political, and economic upheaval is the rugged transition to better times ahead. We live amid priceless opportunities for cosmic service as the religion of Jesus is carried to the world by new teachers and leaders. The costs and the rewards of wholehearted faith are great. Therefore, pray valiantly as you seek and find and choose and do the perfect will of the eternal God of heaven. These spiritual things are real even though you may not be able to see them. Modern science knows of many things, which, though invisible, are quite real. Consider colors. Our human eyes are only sensitive to a narrow range of light wavelengths, from one thirty-three thousandth of an inch to one sixty-four thousandth of an inch. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. But what we can see is only a tiny portion of all the wavelengths. We are literally blind to the higher and lower wavelengths of light. In the same way precisely, we cannot see spiritual things, but they too are there. They are real. If you will dare to believe that they are, whoever has come to know God, if you've come to know God as your father, that person has by worship and communion been led to a lifelong commitment to the service of humankind. If that is the case in your life, such a person is living the religion of Jesus and discovering the truth of it this real, alive, thrilling, dynamic experience, which can never be long contained, cannot be effectively suppressed, ultimately formulated or transmitted by the techniques of worldly education, this religion of Jesus, which you know in your heart, is destined to conquer and transform this planet until we realize the joy of living truly as one family of God, as we were created to live. It is an act of faith thus to live. Act on what faith you have, said Dr. Wilfred Grenfell, and don't worry about what faith you haven't. Another philosopher said, live by faith until you have faith. And after facing many trials and tribulations in his life, a man of faith was asked, how's the outlook? To which he replied, the outlook is absolutely terrible, but the uplook is wonderful. Have living faith in the living God. This liberating gospel of Jesus 
is being rediscovered in this generation by countless men and women who dare to accept God in faith as their spirit father and come to know God personally. If God is your father, then you are a son or daughter of God, and faith enables you to be spiritually transformed into the dignity of living as a member truly a member of God's family. And after you wholeheartedly decide to identify your will with the will of God and decide to become like God, be you therefore perfect, said Jesus, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, you will naturally be led to the joyous worship of your heavenly Father and the loving service of all of humankind. It's not just a theory, it's something you put into practice. One time while Jesus was teaching, a woman in the crowd called out and said, What a blessing for a woman to have brought you into the world and nursed you. And Jesus replied, Yes, but a far greater blessing to hear the word of God and obey it. The faith which Jesus taught was not just thinking, not just believing. It also included doing, not just meditation, but muscle, putting it into practice. A certain man was complaining, about how hard he had to work. Well, what is it you do on your job? A friend of his asked. He said, it's terrible. He said, I sort bananas at a fruit factory. He said, I have to separate all the good bananas from the spoiled ones. And his friend said, well, that doesn't seem to be too difficult. Doesn't sound like it would be. The fellow answered, well, it isn't hard physically. That's not the point. But he said, it's all that mental work. Decisions and decisions and decisions. But the truth is that you need faith to make really good decisions in your life, big decisions. Listen to the words of Solomon. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God, and he shall direct your path. First, he's saying trust in God with all your heart, wholeheartedly. In other words, be fully committed to God in your life. This is a prerequisite to making right decisions. Second, he says, lean not on your own understanding. You must not make up your mind from merely human reasonings because God's ways are not always your ways and your ways are not always God's ways. But God's way is the best way. The will of God for your life, however difficult, however arduous, even distasteful it may appear at the outset, is the ultimately greatest good for your life. And the third step in decision-making is this positive one. In all your ways, says Solomon, in all your ways, acknowledge God. Always take God into consideration. Let God be uppermost in your thoughts, your motivations, and your goals. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, said Jesus, and he will add all the other necessary things to your account. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And God, in conclusion, says Solomon, and God shall direct your paths. Such a faith as that is at the heart of a truly noble human life. Only the person who hungers knows the true delight of food. No one savors water like the person whose tongue smolders with thirst. The lumberjack who swings the axe and drives a saw all day knows more about the joy of falling asleep at night than the shiftless person who lies about the room in indolence. It is a physiological fact. He who does little work needs little food. And likewise, the person who dreams no dreams, has no hopes, loves, aspirations, mighty tasks, and projects in his or her life may feel but little need of further spiritual growth and the power of God. But the man or woman who seeks to live as Jesus taught, as a child of God, as a brother or sister to every other person, the person who's really trying to live in love for one's enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despise you. Return good for evil and live by the noblest truth that person can find. That individual soon discovers his own inward inadequacy, spiritual shortcomings. He finds he can't live this higher life by his own power alone, but needs the inner energies of God. And turning then to God with all of his or her heart, discovers God as a person, a power, a reality in life and begins the great adventure of spiritual growth. Doris Lagasse has written, to walk when others are running, to whisper when others are shouting, to sleep when others are restless, to smile when others are angry, to work when others are idle, to pause when others are hurrying, to pray when others are doubting, to think 
when others are in confusion, to face turmoil and yet feel composure, to know inner calm in spite of everything. This is the true test of serenity. I read a story years ago of an old man named Denny Malone, a retired sea captain and a man of unusual integrity in his life. But he was reading his Bible one day when a friend came by to call on him. This 80-year-old seaman greeted his friend. And they talked for a few moments, and then Malone confided to his friend that he'd been trying to get God to forgive him for six years over some matter, and he won't do it. Well, his friend looked at him keenly. He was also a man of faith. So he asked, have you repented? Denny nodded his head solemnly. Have you trusted in God wholeheartedly? Yes, answered Denny. Well, then you must have found forgiveness. But Denny shook his head and he said, I never feel it in my heart. I just never feel forgiven. And so his friend took the Bible from Denny's hand and together they went over such verses as, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Jesus teaching in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The great teaching, whosoever will, let him come. But old Denny shook his head and said, I still don't feel that forgiveness. Denny, his friend said, when you give your word on something, do you keep your word? Well, sure I do, roared Denny. Doesn't a gentleman always keep his word? And his friend leaned slowly toward him and then said, Denny, don't you think God is a gentleman? And the light that never shone on land or sea shone on Denny Malone's face. That afternoon, he said, what a fool I've been. I see it. I see it now. He does forgive me. And now I feel it in my heart. By living faith this moment, you too can come to know the wonderful, forgiving love of God. And it will transform you every day you live. And you will live forever. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network. Let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644 USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.